My name is Kim Chappell, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this progressive spiritual community where we come together to nourish the spirit, connect in love, and to act for justice. At UUCL, as we like to refer to ourselves, love is our only doctrine, and service and justice are our most sacred prayers. So we pray by striving to live lives in words and deeds that affirm that black lives matter. And our doctrine of love has moved us to affirm for decades that love is divine and love is what makes a family. We gather in community because we need each other. We recognize that the truths of the universe are too complex to be summed up in any one religious tradition's dogma. So we draw meaning and wisdom from many sources, from the healing power of nature, the fierce call of justice, the enlightening discoveries of science, the sage teachings of interdependence and unity, and from awe for the great mystery itself. We acknowledge that the messages of today's prophets can be found posted on social media, chanted in the streets, published in literature, painted on canvas, graffitied onto brick walls, or simply discovered in the sacred process of community. We acknowledge that we live in a place where conservative religion is often used to devalue, manipulate, and shame 
And so it is our hope that the progressive spiritual community that we offer here might heal some of those wounds. We especially welcome anyone who's new or new-ish. We know that coming to a place like this can be intimidating, and we're so glad that you're here. You're welcome to join us after the service for a special picnic lunch. Food and fun activities will be provided. For all of you of all ages, we acknowledge that not everyone participates in worship in the same way. So we welcome you to do what you need to do to be present. Move if you need to, laugh or cry if you need to, and sing and dance whether you think you have rhythm or not. We hope you know that you can bring your imperfect self to our community, not just the spiffed up Sunday best version. In short, this is not your grandma's congregation. Welcome home. I have one more um, thing to say, and that is titled, A Land Acknowledgement. As we prepare ourselves to enter into sacred space, we must first acknowledge the truth of this land. We are gathered on land once inhabited by people known as the Susquehannock and the Conestoga. We acknowledge the violent legacies of genocide, displacement, and settlement that lead us here today. This land carries these memories and we remind ourselves to live humbly in relation with this land and with all of the indigenous people still living and loving on this continent. I wanna let you know that I'm Reverend Israel, I'm the minister of this congregation, and I use he, him for pronouns, and we're gonna hear music from several of our members, friends, and staff members today. First is Stock Weinstock. The, the piece that I will be playing is called The Swan, uh, written by Camille Sanson.
light our chalice now, which is the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist movement. Uh, we will light our chalice this morning with song, with music, and with words. And I'm, I'm told that this is a very special and magical chalice, and it cannot light unless you sing loud enough. <laughs> the words to our chalice lighting song are on the little pieces of paper that we handed out, and if anyone needs more, I have some up here and they're on this table, or you can share with each other. It is Rise Up, O Flame. And if you don't know it, we'll sing it enough times through so that you can learn it, I hope. And if you do, join. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy Flame can't quite hear, from what I understand. So let's give it a few more times. See if you can sing louder than me. I challenge you, ready? Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, show to So the, the song, the song that uh, Stock played for us on the cello um, called The Swan has a myth that's associated with it that perhaps some of you know, and maybe some of you have heard the term swan song, especially if you were uh, privileged to read the self-written obituary that um, our beloved member Fred Kinsey, who recently died, wrote of himself. He called it a swan song. And the myth behind the swan song is that there is a certain type of swan, a, a swan that does not sing or make noise during its lifetime, but that as it is dying, right before it dies, it sings out with abandon, wild abandon, you might say, a complete and most beautiful song. The most beautiful song you could ever wish to hear. Now that is a total myth. It's not true, but of course, like all myths, uh, there is much truth behind it, or much wisdom anyway. And so the wisdom for us this morning is to not wait till it is your last turn to sing, to sing out loud and proud and beautiful with all of your soul and all of your heart and all of your being, to live life essentially to the fullest while you can. So I remind us all this morning that yes, you can sing. Even if you don't think you can, even if you think you have bad rhythm, even if you think you can't match pitch, even if your allergies are bothering you this morning, even if you were told by someone 
when you were a kid that you didn't know how to sing or you were told when you were in a chorus to not sing that note because you're not singing it quite right. One other thing I want you to know is that our singing for us, our breath, uh, is, is like something expressing itself in song. Something that one might call the deep longing of your heart, of your spirit, trying to call out to you and remind you to be alive, remind you that you are alive. So we're going to just practice. Uh, okay, one more thing. <laughs> One more thing. Uh, you might have heard, if you grew up in a Christian church of some kind, that there was a traditional way of thinking of singing hymns, which is that you're praising the divine. And that to sing out loud, you are praising the divine doubly so if you're singing out loud and well. I wouldn't tell you or ask you to believe here in this space that that is what you are doing by singing out loud. Instead, I would ask you to think of singing as something that is, like I just said, deep inside of you that is longing to break free. So, we're going to practice making a little bit of noise together. And I'm going to make it really easy at first, something that I know that we can all do. So just take note of what I'm doing and repeat after me. Okay? We'll start off simple. sometimes and does silly things. Boom! <sighs> yes, I can sing. All creatures on this earth have a place in the choir. during the chorus because we need help with this one. We definitely need help with the chorus. Yes. Okay. So it starts off, all guys, creatures, got a place in the choir. Some sing low, low, like the bass. Some sing higher, like the, like the sopranos. Okay. And some sing out loud on a telephone wire. And some just clap their hands. If the little monkeys clap in their hands, or their paws, but not animals have hands or paws. Some animals have, like penguins, they have wings. And if they don't have hands or paws, they can clap and do whatever they got. Do that penguin dance. You got the penguin dance. Okay. So we'll do the chorus. Feel free to feel free to join us the verse if you know it, and definitely join us in the chorus, please. Oh, there's one more thing. <laughs> Somewhere in the song, there is a cow. So when the moonshine goes up, Oh, oh that's wonderful. Oh, this is that too bad. <laughs> Creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and 
Some sing high, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands and applause for anything they got now. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands and applause for anything they got now. Listen to the top where the little bird sings on the melodies with the high notes ringing and the hoot owl cries over everything and the blackbird disagrees. Singing in the nighttime, singing in the day when the little dog quacks and his arm goes away and the otter doesn't have much to say and the porcupine talks to himself. <laughs> All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some Well, the dogs and the cats, they take up the middle while the honeybee hums and the cricket fiddles, donkey prays and the pony maze, and the big old crab badger sighs. Listen to the bass, it's the one on the bottom where the bullfrogs croak and the hippopotamus moves and croaks and stuff and things. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot the words, and the cow goes. Ooh. <laughs> All kinds of creatures got a place, place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands and pause for anything they got now. It's a simple song, a little song everywhere by the ox. And the show up to rehearsal. <laughs> Please join. I, I wanted to reflect just a little bit on the, the sacred depths of sound and what the deep and powerful and divine purpose of music is for all of us. In Unitarian Universalism, I have said before that we really like words. We love words. And words are cool. Words are great. And words are... Um, there's an art and a craft and a beauty to them, and we can shape them to make meaning in our lives and understand the world and talk about the nuances of things that we see and experience. And they also give us, in many ways, a certain amount of certainty. I can call that a rock. You might call it a stone. I can call that grass. You might call it a plant. But there's a word that I can use to describe it, and I can say that I am sad, or mad, or happy, and I give it a definitive feeling. But words often fall so short, even though they are sound, they are a way of expressing ourselves through sound. They leave out so much, and they can be used to lie, to deceive, whether intentional or not. Words are perhaps, you might think of it as just one other product of evolution, of, of the way that people and the world has evolved and changed and grown. And it's a way that the world has evolved to express itself in sound and in writing. But I think that when truly wanting to connect with each other, sometimes it's best to go beyond words and to use the other tools that we have, not to necessarily not use words, but to use all of the tools at our disposal, including those nonverbal cues that we give each other. And I propose for us this morning that sound, 
It's really hard to lie in sound. The unexpected laugh that comes to you when something happens that you weren't expecting and you just cry out laughing. It's hard to suppress that. The wail or the cry or the whelp that comes when unexpected tragedy hits us. Your body crying out, literally, not allowing you to ignore what's going on. The joyful and joyous, whoa, when something fun happens. Or gasp, when the unexpected surprises us. It's hard to suppress those things. And sound, too, is really just the result of vibration, actually. And I might also say that it is the most basic form of existence. It is the most basic expression of the world. That sound is the result of things on the subatomic level vibrating, reminding us of the deep spiritual dimensions of vibration that occur in all things. You could look at it from a historical spiritual perspective too. Um, in, in, in the Hebrew Bible, the word Yahweh, which is another one of the words for the divine, meaning I am what I am, is really also said to be reminiscent of the sound of a breath. The, um, the word that is often used in Hindu and Jain and Buddhism and Sikhism, which is Om, perhaps some of you have heard that or chanted it before, is one of those primeval sounds said to be representative of the beginning and end of all things or the essence or the breath of life. A sound that is said to contain all things. And another meaning for that word is also, may it be so, or it is so, which is where Hebrew gets the word, amen. They're strikingly similar to each other. <laughs> and then there's the sounds of the earth itself. And the sound of your own body, your own heart, reminding you of the way things truly are. Music in ourselves and from the silence mirrors the language of creation. It is something arising up out of silence or nothing, creating and revealing the world to itself, to us. To create music, to create sound, to be sound, because you are sound at your essence, is to play your part in molding and shaping and creating and being the world itself being creation. So I'm going to end this moment with you with actually just a few lessons of sound. Hmm. Okay. Think of yourselves as members of a great chorus of life not hard to do out here in nature listening to its sounds. I remember, I ask you to think of and remember a few different things. Don't forget to put loving vibrations into the mix. Cooperate and learn how to match pitch in community when it's needed. Sing harmony with creation knowing that is, it is the different gifts that we bring that can be complementary and represent what is needed. But don't be afraid to strike out a discordant note when the chorus is singing an unjust tune. 
don't hesitate to insert a staccato solo when you need to get our attention or alert us to danger. Solos can be fun. But remember, you are only one person, one expression of existence. So embrace the power of the chorus and learn how to trust in the process of staggered breathing. You don't have to hit every note all the time, all by yourself. So know this, that life existence is a song and a dance that we do together. We are all out here under Earth's cathedral, seeking to find our rhythm and understand the steps of that dance. So let it be a dance that we do together. Feel free to get up if you want. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you. Through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Let a dancing song be heard. Play the music, say. for a dance floor here. Learn to follow, learn to lead. Feel the rhythm, feel the need. Greet the heart and plant the seed. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you. Through the good times and Everybody turn and spin. Let your body learn to bend. And like a willow with the wind, let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. A child is born, the old must die. A time for a joy, a time to cry. Take it as a comes out at night without the dark there is no light if nothing's wrong then nothing's right let it be a dance let it be a dance let it be a dance let the sun shine let it rain please don't <laughs> share the laughter bear the pain Couple songs here. I know who you are too. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Eli. Hi, Eli Sol. Choir director, music Hi. coordinator, and kind of tech mediator, whatever you want to call it at this point. Um, we have a wonderful tech team. <laughs> um, uh, the next song, uh, part of the service is called Songs of Significance. And um, the next few musicians coming up are just going to offer, they're going to introduce their piece, but offer a few words about maybe why that piece was important or the way the music has impacted them and just to share a little bit about themselves. Phil, do you want to offer I'm, I'm Phil Halsinger. I, I grew up in a music family, and mom and dad both played. Mom and dad both played piano. I played piano. My sister played. My brother played piano. Um, and at some point, I took up the trumpet, and I realized if you want to play a song along with the, the piano, you have to learn how to transpose. And that means going. You go up, go up one note, and add two sharps to the key signature. So if the, 
you can subtract two flats, so if the key's in two flats for the piano, that's the key of C for you, which is good. If it's three sharps for the piano, that means it's five sharps for you, and then I start getting hairy. So anyway, um, I'm gonna do a, an old Irish folk song called Annie Laurie, and uh, I forget how many how many flats it's in here, but I think it's I think it's one sharp for me, but we'll find out. <laughs> I'm, I'm Alan, I'm the new uh, pianist and accompanist. You know, it works out well because Stephanie and I, my partner there, like to hang out at Chestnut Hill Cafe, and that's like basically the Unitarian <laughs> coffee shop. I mean, it's like the staff is in and out of there all day, so it's easy to meet up with Eli. So um, this next song is something I wrote, and uh, they want me to say a moment about it. Um, uh, the inspiration, now I haven't written a lot of songs with words, but I'm now feeling very called to, to do that more. I've written a few here and there. And Stephanie and I were going to a uh, hippie gathering and there was gonna be singing around the campfire and stuff. And I thought, well, maybe I can come up with a song that people could hopefully sing in a, you know, easily or relatively easy. So I came up with this one. Um, so I'm gonna sing the choir once, the, sorry, the chorus once, and anybody that already knows it and a few people kind of ran it through with me, join in and then come in the second time. Um, and then I'll do a verse and then we'll do it twice again and a verse we'll do it twice again. So if, feel free to sing and you know, uh, if you're not perfectly in pitch, I think we've established that. We're great with that, Just whatever. <laughs> Join in if you feel the song. The the chorus is the only words in the chorus are it's not too late to love, and that's the name of the song. <laughs> it's not too late to love. It's not too late. Differences go. 
as each of us, the human race, with all our hearts aglow. It's not too late to love. It's not too late to love. It's not too late. Let that chalice hear you. Let's do it again. It's not too late to love. It's not too late to love. It's not too late to love. We are all made of star stuff. All of space and time, all sharing life on this planet. Blue. If you feel it, then let it shine. It's not too late to love. It's not too late. So this is uh, my partner, Stephanie, and uh, <clears throat> we met on a um, group that was for uh, ENFPs, if anybody knows what that is, Myers Briggs type. Thank you, there you go. <laughs> um, and so we call our little duo when we do stuff ENFP. <laughs> Stands for extrovert, in, extroverted intuiting feeling perceiving. I'm not saying it's the best of the 16 different types, but I'm not saying it's not either, so. <laughs> Hi, um, yeah, Alan had a nice intro there. Uh, so I'm Stephanie and um, I'm gonna sing Landslide. Uh, and the significance of it to me is that um, I, um, when, I was, when I was younger, I was working at this place uh, called Crisis in York, it still exists. Uh, we were um, taking suicide hotline calls. Um, and I, I met a friend who was like, we're gonna go to karaoke because you're gonna love it, girl. And I was like, probably um, I would have to drink and I don't really wanna drink. And she's like, no, you'll be all about it. Um, so this was actually the first song I sang um, at karaoke. <laughs> and um, I'm still nervous, by the way, every time I get up to sing, even though I, I sing semi-professionally with Alan. Um, so, you know, this is Landslide, it's Fleetwood Mac. Feel free to join in. I don't have to do it um, all by myself. Everybody knows the song, so. I took my love and I took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around. And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills till the landslide brought me down. Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child within my heart rise above? Can I sail through the changing ocean tides? Can I Yeah. 
too Oh, I'm getting older too Well, I've been afraid of changing Cause I, I built my life around you But time makes you bolder Children get older And I'm getting older too So take this love, take it down And then you turn around And if you see my reflection In the snow-covered hills Where the landslide will bring it down, down And if you see my reflection In the snow-covered hills Landslide will bring it down. Well, well, the landslide will bring it down. Yeah. Community is made possible by the offering of our individual skills, commitments, and gifts. The truth is that we need each other and money to survive. And yet, nobody's worth and dignity is any way measured by the amount of money that they have or don't have to give. So, during the offering, we invite you to offer what you can, if you can, to support this sanctuary of progressive spirituality in Lancaster. We share half of our offering <clears throat> this month with The Mix. It's a local organization that inspires youth and empowers families by running an after-school program and summer day camp for children in Lancaster. If you don't carry cash, you can text the amount of your donation to, and I'll repeat this number, 855-927-3685. That's 855-927-3685. Or you can go to the website at uuclonline.org and contribute, um, donate via the Contribute tab there. And some folks are coming around for collection. And thank you for whatever you are moved to give. Yep. Oh, great. So, as, as the fire makes their way up, um, what a wonderful world. This arrangement um, is from Good Morning Vietnam, but it's by Mark A. Brimmer. Um, if you feel inclined to sing along a little bit with the melody, do so. I will warn you it's a little different than uh, the standard version. Thank you.
we have this on. We have discovered together what you already knew, that it is a wonderful and beautiful, magical, mystical, and musical world that we share together. We have expressed ourselves through sound and hopefully, hopefully, begun to allow ourselves to cry out when we need to. <laughs> to cry out to the world and express what is in our hearts and minds and souls and bodies. To know ourselves as a part of the beautiful vibrations of this world. And now it is our time to go out and to feast and to picnic as well. Uh, and before we do, before we extinguish our chalice, or as we extinguish our chalice, we have one more beautiful and loving expression of this world through music. I'm Georgine. I'm Jean. Don't you think it's time? 